All right, so uh, can we get a, a look at uh, what goes on here at International Yeah, Bar? for sure. Let's go. So uh, where does the whole barrel making process start? Well, it starts over at the steel. So this is our this is our pile of steel. Yep. Basically, it's all uh, rifle grade uh, steel. Most of this stuff comes from France. Uh, we find that the quality and the consistency of the steel is is awesome for rifle barrels. Uh, so most of this is stainless. 416R. Um, and we get it in large quantities uh, because like ammunition, you want the lots to be the same. Mm -hmm. And so we basically try and get as much as we can uh, in the same order uh, so that we can produce consistent barrels. What's next? Next, we got to cut it because otherwise you're going to have a 12 foot long barrel. So over here, we run it through the saw. We measure it off uh, to make sure that it's the uh, right length. And come out. With a piece like that, it's fairly rough on the ends. So the next step after cutting it is to face off the ends of the barrel to make sure it's all flat and square. So we're gonna face the end so that we know we're drilling uh, square. And is there a barrel in there right now? Uh, yeah, there is something in there that he's, uh, he's working on right now. So after we face the ends, then we've gotta drill the hole, obviously, that's kind of an important part. So we do it on the gun drill, uh, which is this over here. So this is our gun drill, it drills two barrels at a time. Uh, what you see on top there is an actual uh, uh, drill. Fairly thin, fairly flexible. It's got a groove right down the middle uh, that helps with the chips as it's cutting. Now on this one, the drill spins. On our other drill, uh, the barrel spins and the drill stays stationary. It's a little bit different, but we can have a look at that machine too. Okay, so this is our Pratt & Whitney drill, uh, gun drill. It's, uh, it's an old girl, it was made in 1917. Pretty much guaranteed to have made uh, rifle barrels or machine gun barrels even uh, during World War II and all the other conflicts that we had. Uh, sometimes the old stuff is the best stuff. So this is a pretty awesome machine uh, that we use as well. So from here, once the, uh, once the barrel's drilled, then we have to ream it to make sure the uh, inside diameter is perfect, the bore, so that's over here. So once we get it reamed, uh, basically what we have to do is make sure the barrel is lubricated so that we can pull the button through and the, barrel doesn't get, uh, the button doesn't get stuck in the barrel. So we went through a ton of different lubricants to try and figure out what worked the best, and we ended up, believe it or not, on a type of soap. So this is where we lube up the barrels before they get the buttons pulled. So basically what happens is we take our unprofiled blank, goes on the, machine, on the uh, thing, and we inject a bunch of soap uh, into the barrel and rotate it to make sure that the entire bore is covered on the inside. Uh, the, the soap is actually uh, heated up, so you have to heat it up to a certain temperature and then inject it and it becomes a liquid. It's kind of like wax almost. Uh, and then once we're sure the bore is completely covered, then it goes on this apparatus down here. And they sit to dry. So the lube can't actually be wet. It has to be dry when, when we actually pull the button through. We did a lot of testing with that as well. And uh, if there's any kind of moisture in the lube, it actually causes more problems. So what happens in this process is, uh, the button gets uh, inserted through the bore and put onto the hydraulic machine and it gets drawn through the bore and it engraves basically the rifling into the pre-cut and, and reamed bore. And you can see what it goes through there. And we rotate it We make about uh, 15 barrels a day. We're not a high quantity producer, but the barrels that we do produce are uh, super high quality. So we're looking for uh, quality, not quantity. So as far as how they compare to other manufacturers, I've shot a lot of other barrels and uh, 
our 308 barrel stack up with uh, the Kriegers and the Bart lines, no problem. Even though they're button rifled, it's a little bit different process than what those guys do. But uh, as far as accuracy goes, they're just as good. So what happens when they come off of the reamer uh, is they get lapped. Okay. So they get lapped for about uh, 15 minutes pre-lapping before they get buttoned. And that lapping smooths out all the, uh, all the dimensions on the inside. Michael's the guy that is the pro at lapping, yeah, but he's buttoning right now, so won't be able to show you. Yeah, our barrels are all double hand lapped. So they get lapped once before they get buttoned, and then they get lapped after again to finish. So basically what would happen is uh, the barrel would get put in here. Like this. And our hand laps are all actually made out of lead. So what happens is, that's actually a hand lap right there. There's one on there. So this is the lap. It's uh, hand poured in the barrel. So you get the exact dimensions of the barrel and the uh, groove diameter and everything. And it goes in the barrel and it's custom for each barrel. It's done twice. It's done uh, once after it gets reamed. And then after the barrel comes off the buttoning machine and it gets cleaned and everything's good to go, then it gets hand lapped again to put that sort of final finish on the... The contour gets cut uh, next. Uh, we have a Haas TL uh, CNC machine to cut all the contour. So once the barrel comes out of the profiling machine, then depending on what the customer wants, uh, we either chamber it, thread it, and finish it, or we ship it out like this. It goes for a polish, and we buff it down so it's got a nice finish on the outside, and then it gets packed up for shipping, and uh, away we go. Basically, the way we cut these things is with a face driver at one end, which clamps onto the action, onto the face of the action. On the other end, we're using a center, which goes into the muzzle end. So because we're using 27 inch blanks, at the end of the day, you have to chop about an inch off the barrel to make sure that where that center went in hasn't expanded and you've sort of lost your crown. So at the end of the day, you need a 27, or pardon me, a 26 inch blank. It'll be finished at 26. After the barrels get um, buttoned, then what we have to do is stress relief because the button, buttoning process actually imparts a lot of stress into the steel. So what we want to do is clean the bore completely out so that there's nothing left in there and then we're going to put them into the uh, stress reliever oven. So the barrel would be cooled at this point? You don't need gloves or anything? No, you don't. Yeah, we leave it long enough so that it cools right down so you can pull them up by hand. Cool. Do you guys do cuts for threaded muzzles and stuff too? Can, yeah. yeah. So do you guys, uh, when you guys chamber a, a barrel, is it like done to match specs or? Yeah, all the reamers we use are all match reamers. Um, customers can specify a different reamer if they prefer, but uh, depending on the type of barrel, we like to use the match reamers as much as we can because it gives you the most accurate um, chamber that you can get. Uh, also, <clears throat> the match reamers are probably used with the most common bullets as well, so we've tried to match up the reamers to the bullets that people use and take into account uh, magazine length because a lot of guys want to still run them out of a magazine. So if you have too much free bore, uh, the bullets are going to have to go out too far to hit the lands and the grooves and then they may not fit in the magazine. So we try and take all that into account when we're chambering them up. transition of the chamber to the to the barrel and the rifling so that it all ends up at the same wow. so it's an even all the way around mm -hmm. yeah. and a smooth transition and a smooth transition with the with the dial board.
So what range are we going to zero this at? Uh, we're just going to shoot at 100 to start with. Okay. Uh, after we shoot a few groups and you can sort of see how they do, then if you want to go out to 200 or 300, we can do that no problem. Okay, way high in the dirt over the target. Okay. So I just give it a full rotation down. I'd say that'll do it. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. All right. So you shot these two grips here. And they're both 10 rounds. And they're both uh, the 175 gold medal match. This was your first one over here. Yeah. And then this one here, you had a couple at the very end that sort of clipped the outside edges of the... Yeah. The target, but that's probably because you fired 20 rounds in about three minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Ryan, thanks a lot. No problem. It's been a great day. Uh, it was really yeah. cool to see the factory, how a barrel is made straight from scratch all the way through till the finished product which we have now on my rifle excellent because uh, up until today all i've seen is barrel blanks that have already had mm -hmm. the rifling and everything put into it so this was really neat to see and it's really cool to see that canadian companies are getting into that other than colt canada i think was the only other one yeah i think so on a large scale anyways yeah yeah so uh good. thanks a lot again for having me out at the range no testing problem. it using your ammo absolutely <laughs> and not cheap ammo good uh gold medal match and it shot really well so yep. Uh, we were able to do sub MOA with uh, factory ammunition, which yep. is pretty awesome. There was no break in period today. Yeah, it was good. So, yeah, fourth shot as uh, we started our 10 round groupings. Yep, it was pretty good. Straight into from zero right into a group, and yep. you're good to go. Right on. Um, so, I think that's it. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to say to the viewers about your barrels? Uh, just, you know, give us a chance if you're uh, looking for a new barrel. We're a new company, uh, but we're going to back our barrels 100%. And if you have any problems, we'll take care of you. But uh, yeah, give us a try. We're in Canadian dollars too, so that might help a little. Right on. Thanks a lot. Thanks, pal. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'll be sure to take it out to some uh, longer ranges yeah, soon. Send and me I'll some give pictures. you guys some feedback. Absolutely. Right on. Thanks Great. a lot. All right, you bet. <clears throat> hey, everyone. I want to talk to you guys all about an exclusive offer on our Patreon page. If you become one of our patrons for only $2.50 a month or the cost of an ex uh, expensive Starbucks coffee, uh, you can be one of our supporters on Patreon. Uh, you're going to get some free swag, we're going to be doing some giveaways over on there. As well, you're going to get to see some of our really good videos that you're not going to get to see anywhere else. So, click the link below, become one of our patrons, check out some of our awesome videos that you're not going to see anywhere else. As well, get some free stuff. I'm Ryan, and I'm out of here.